Hi, it's Steve Hargadon, and welcome to the fourth annual Library 2.0 conference. Of course, the name says it, Library 2.014. We're delighted to have the conference co-chair, Dr. Sandra Hirsch, here to give the opening keynote. Sandy, welcome. Thank you, Steve. I'm really excited to be here and to um, have us kick off this fourth um, fourth conference together. It's exciting. It is exciting. Thanks for all that you do. Thanks to the School of Information at San Jose State University, CISL at Rutgers, Follett, Library Journal, Blackboard Collaborate for this oh-so-stable platform. We appreciate you. Wilson Consulting, the Washington Library Media Association, and Counting Options. What a fun day. Two really full days ahead. So glad to have you here. Let us know where you're participating from. Look to the left of the map. You're looking for the star icon. Click on it twice, then click on the map and give a shout out in the chat. Let us know the time, the temperature. Somebody's hovering over Europe. Hooray. We love the international aspect of this conference. Two in Europe. Peggy says it's 7 o'clock and raining. Wasn't it 109 yesterday or something? Looks like South Africa. Oh, 99. <laughs> I exaggerated in my memory. Keep those notes going in the chat. We know that part of the fun of this conference is connecting with each other. And we hope that you do plenty of it over the course of the next two days. Dr. Sandy, I'm turning it over to you now. Once again, I wanted to welcome all of you to, um, and to uh, share my excitement with you over this morning's presentation and also to officially welcome you once again to the Library 2.014 conference. I am thrilled to kick off this, our fourth conference together on the future of libraries. And today I'm going to be discussing uh, working in a global environment, success strategies for today's information professional. So throughout this presentation, um, keynote presentation, we're going to be taking a journey through the transcendence of the information professional, through um, day in the life scenarios and reflect reflective photos. We're going to explore how the image of the information professional physically and virtually, and uh, physically and vocationally, has transcended over time. We will discuss the phenomenon of the global community and the essential role information professionals perform within the global environment, and also the positive impact that those roles make on the communities that they serve. And we will also discuss the essential value of the MLIS degree, such as how does the MLIS degree today prepare information professionals to serve the complex needs of today's organizations, both within the library and information science field and also outside of it. What are the essential and transferable um, competencies unique to the information professional skill set? Finally, and maybe most importantly, what is the key to becoming rock stars in the, in the organizations, communities, and global environments that information professionals engage in every day? Um, I see that somebody had raised their hand. Um, Gerald, did you Sandy, have a question? You, Sandy, you plug away and I'll work on questions. In okay. Advance. Okay, very good. Thank you. So what do we mean when we say the transcendence of the library? This comic gives us a glimpse into what we're talking about. It's about definition, definition of what a library is and who a librarian is, and moving beyond the normal, a normal or expected level. It's also about a definition of what the information organization is and who the information professional is in today's global environment. So Webster Miriam defines the library as a place 
where books, magazines, and other materials, such as videos and musical recordings, are available for people to use or to borrow. Libraries, as defined here, are considered as the holders of books, videos, and musical recordings. These traditional library buildings encompass shelves of books that span the aisle of, and the aisle as well as the side walls, and card catalogs that provided paper indexes of the library's contents, as well as technology-free rooms used for quiet study and reading. The library also had a set hours of operation. If the library was not open, access was not available. Merriam-Webster also defines the librarian as a specialist in the care and management of a library. Of course, when we begin talking about the image of the traditional librarian, stereotypical images often come up, such as the one shown here with a lady um, in glasses telling everyone to be quiet, among other possibly nostalgic images of librarians many of us knew in our youth. The, librarian, and the librarian's role was traditionally defined as keeper of the book, cataloger, reader advisor, reference service provider, archivist, children's services provider, among a few. Their services were built around physical collections, access to those collections, and community engagement. Qualifications for the traditional librarian represented many of of the characteristics and traits that are still considered core in information science today. Vitality, courage, intelligence, sensitiveness, and dedication. By 1996, more foundational librarian skills such as knowledge of sources, reference interviews, collection management, and applying critical thinking skills were also added as top librarian um, qualifications. These more traditional, um, uh, uh, traditional roles were also reflected in the media, particularly books and film, in what librarians were called. Here's a sampling of films portraying librarians as shushing lady, bookman, archives clerk, and so on. And did you know that Batman, uh, Batgirl was a librarian who helped Bruce Wayne find a book on butterflies to make a point to a millionaire explorer? Just a little bit of trivia for your day. Libraries as we knew them remain constant for many generations. With the emergence, though, of technology, the, library, the library's transcendence begins. The internet and the plethora of emerging technologies that continue to evolve have dramatically changed the library, its collections, its services, and the roles of the professionals that work in them. In his 2011 white paper titled The Hyperlink Library, Dr. Michael Stevens wrote, when asked what I see for the future of libraries, I imagine a space where users will connect, collaborate, create, and care. That future is now. The role of t um, the library today is a, um, is a place that allows the community to connect with each other, with technology, and with information resources. Technology has impacted library service in ways never imagined in the libraries of the past. Let's explore a bit um, before we go more in depth into what libraries are today and who the librarian is today. IFLA identified five key trends that in, will impact the global information markets and consequently libraries. And these are that technologies will expand and limit who has access to information, um, that online ed education will democratize and disrupt global learning, the boundaries of privacy and data protection will be redefined, and hyper-connected societies will listen to you and empower new voices and groups, and that the global information environment will be transformed by new technologies. As a consequence, today's libraries are now seeing the emergence of a new role and value for their communities. The library's focus on technology is now much more vast than bridging the digital divide. 
Libraries are now extending their services outside the building to connect with the community and to offer library services wherever they are and at their moment of need. In a recent report titled Disruptive Technologies, Advances That Will Transform Life, Business, and the Global Economy by McKinsey Global Institute, several techn technologies were identified that could truly um, drive massive economic transformations and disruptions in the coming years. Many of those will directly impact libraries as well. One of them is the mobile internet, which is now increasingly inexpensive, and it's allowing information users to work, learn, and play anytime, anywhere. It's also increasing worker productivity across all industries, and is, has, been a proven, has been proven to be an efficient form of service delivery. So coupled with the mobile internet is the availability of cloud computing which also increases the productivity of enterprise information technologies, but especially important for individuals and for libraries in, um, regarding cloud computing is that it provides additional space for storing information, and it also ensures that information is accessible wherever people are, whether that's the office, home, the web, or any mobile device. As a result, inf information is now available to anyone, anywhere, anytime, locally, nationally, and globally. The impact of these technologies in, the, in our libraries warrants much consideration because of the breadth of users that are served. This graph comes from the Pew um, Internet Report and demonstrates that technology adoption, including emerging technologies and social networking, um, has increased annually in every age group. While the predominant users are between the ages of 18 to 29, the gradual increase of technology adoption demonstrated over the past seven years represents a consistent increase amongst all age groups, and current literature indicates that this trend will continue. These technologies, the way society has adopted them across generations, and the way that individuals use these technologies for their social academic, professional, and entertaining needs has dramatically changed how, when, and where users access information. Libraries have responded by transforming themselves as essential organizations that meet users at their point of need. Within this broader context, we now expand the term library to information organization, and we also expand the roles of the librarian to those of an information professional. Let's explore this a bit. Today's information organization extends beyond the traditional model of a quiet building that held physical collections that were otherwise unattainable. From the way they provide services to the way they arrange their physical space, today's information organizations have gone through some intriguing transformations. For example, hours of operation for these organizations are no longer restricted by time. Access to their services is now available 24-7, 365. Today's information organizations are mobile. That means they are now reaching their communities where they are and doing so in the most unique ways as shown on this slide. You can see it by borough, by truck, by boat, by bike. Information service um, is taking on a new form in what resources and the organization maintains, what technologies they adopt, the services they provide, and how they extend their services to the various communities that they serve. Technology has changed um, both the way we access information as well as how perf um, patrons access the library. With the integration of mobile devices, mobile apps, and wireless internet, Information organizations can now provide service without regard to location, they can provide information at the point of demand or the point of need, and they can provide real-time guidance in a variety of settings. 
When we're talking about the mobile access services, we're talking much more broad, broadly than just searching materials online. Important aspects of mobile access that are worth highlighting include that it's, it is initiated electronically and that patrons access information professionals using computers and mobile technology, and also that the communication between the patron and the library ha can happen now via chat, video conferencing, co-browsing, email, and instant messages, and also that the response and follow-up may occur using a range of technologies as well. So along with these virtual um, as access, we have the streamlining of how physical spaces are used. So we're seeing the automation of new patron-driven access services such as self-checkout services or kiosks for checking out equipment. We're also seeing the reallocation of physical space to create student workstations, collaborative spaces, and even maker spaces. Uh, spaces where members of the community come to interact with new technology or learn and explore or as part of a classroom or community-based program. Let's take a look at some of examples of the use of emerging technology and the use of physical space in an academic library as an example. So a good example of information organizations that have become more accessible is Drexel University, which introduced a 24-hour self-service vending machine located in the W.W. Haggerty Library that will dispense MacBooks for use by students, faculty, and staff. The kiosk provides a 24-hour solution to the students who want to work on projects and assignments or study at the library late into the night. So information organizations are also flexible. So this example of a new library space at the University of Illinois Learning Commons demonstrates a high-tech infused comfortable and flexible learning space and a one-stop academic information help center. And it even promises good coffee. The Commons includes a space for group collaboration and individual study with modern technology amenities and high-quality assistance with information and technology resources. Libraries are providing maker spaces for learning and exploring um, with new technologies, and so that's our fostering creative and playful environments. Erin Fisher highlights that libraries are places where people from all disciplines gather and that by bringing maker spaces into libraries, we can provide opportunities for new types of rich cross-disciplinary interaction to occur. Makerspaces also provide opportunities for community members of all ages to explore with emerging technologies, such as 3D printers, augmented reality, and game-based learning, expanding both their awareness of these new technologies, as well as expanding their skills and knowledge. The information organization is also increasingly um, engaging with technology. So information organizations engage with technology to expand interactive technology and um, to expand interactive technology such as robots. So at the Westport Library, Connecticut, for example, they have invested in two robots that will be used to help teach coding and computer programming skills. So as you can see, the possibilities are endless. So in order to compete in this in, on global information economy, information organizations need to become the essential one-stop resource for information and technical information literacy. They need to provide access to mobile and online learning resources. They also need to integrate as many emerging technologies into their services as possible. And they also need to provide an environment of exploration and play to learn these new technologies. The roles of today's librarian, or what we now are calling an information professional, in a variety of organizations, including libraries, have dramatically changed. 
These new roles um, include um, a wide range, just to mention a few, emerging services librarian, director of digital content, digital asset coordinator, virtual services librarian. They have a range of different roles and titles. And then here it's also a list of <clears throat> several emerging job titles which call for skills that people with a library and information science degree and background have but may not be in a library setting. And these job titles may not use the word librarian, but they do reference our core skill sets in the descriptions of what they're looking for in the positions. So as you can see in this list, we can leverage our deep understanding of technology to fill roles like digital product manager, digital strategist, and web developer. We can use our expertise in how to organize information and user needs in roles like information architect, taxonomist, and cloud metadata specialist. The influence of technology in our communities and the need, need for information professionals is stronger today than ever before. Information organizations of all types need employees who are competent in both the foundational and technological applications of the information uh, and knowledge and expertise. These organizations also need employees who are committed to transforming themselves and their roles as well as the organization throughout their careers. In the day in the life scenario, information professionals may perform many tasks, including uh, as problem solver, organizer, innovator, collaborator, curriculum developer, knowledge manager, as well as many other um, things that they may do throughout the day. So for example, in today's information and technologically based environment, technical skills are firmly rooted among the top competencies for reference librarians. According to a study by the American Library Association's job list, um, the four, uh, four such uh, skills appearing in the ads were web development, this is in 2007, project management, systems development, and systems applications. Other skills reported on job trends and um, qualifications, including information literacy instruction, digital libraries, automated library systems, emerging technologies, and more. Each year, the San Jose State University School of Information reviews over 450 job listings appearing in library-centric job listing sites like ALA, SLA, LIST, etc., and also in more general job posting sites like Monster.com, Indeed, Idealist, etc. And given the trends in emerging technologies, therefore, it's not surprising that the results from a recent career trend reports suggest that new and emerging technologies, network and integrated library systems, and metadata standards for electronic collections management um, are some of the most frequently mentioned job skills. Other job responsibilities mentioned included um, creating web and social media presence, creating and, and sourcing of um, digital tools, including apps on databases, um, and implementing digital digitization projects. Information professionals have the opportunity to apply their skills in many different organizations and environments, and for both physical and virtual client groups. Because many of the key skills developed while attaining the MLIS degree are applicable to both traditional and non-traditional information environments, many library and information science schools are now providing specialized courses, graduate programs, certificate programs, and additional focus areas known as pathways. These career pathways demonstrate how the skill set of the information professional can be applied to different job functions and in both physical and virtual organizational environments. A Master of Library and Information Science is at MLIS. Um, pathways in um, the library and information science um, educational setting provide students guidelines on career paths they may want to pursue and recommend electives and course selections that direct the student toward a desired pathway. 
A recent study that I conducted in collaboration with one of my research assistants, Elaine Hall, we surveyed all um, American Library Association accredited library and information science programs, and we found that five, five primary pathway categories with various specialty pathways outlined for masters of library and information science students. These primary pathways within the information technology arena included digital libraries, information architecture, design, and programming, information technology, and socio-technical um, areas such as human-computer interaction, social media, and data curation. So continuing with the reference services example I started with earlier, Hunt and Grossman in 2013 um, developed a whole section in their librarian's skill, skill book on skills beyond reference services that extend beyond the library setting. These skills include strategic knowledge and advantage, results-driven problem solving, research and analysis, and competitive intelligence. Additional skills being required in the skill set include the ability to provide value-added solutions and to think outside the box. So, um, Just to give an example, the San Jose State um, School of Information offers a range of career pathways, including one on information organization, description, analysis, and retrieval, which fulfills various library-related jobs, but can also fulfill non-traditional positions in analytics, competitive intelligence, and strategic planning. So here we have um, a library and information science career path for reference services. Here you can see the required skills listed by employers for reference services include the ability to collect, organize, and evaluate data, knowledge of services, and um, PC and web skills. But notice also the skills bolded in the list. The problem solving and the ability to learn new technology quickly and leadership. These skills may or may not be included in the curriculum for reference service and yet are considered a required skill set for these positions. We will explore opportunities for, and for attaining these skills as we move through the presentation. So again, to give an example um, about a pathway for gaining those skills, um, in, our, in our school and the School of Information, there's a pathway for academic librarianship the information and learning co um, commons as an option for attaining the specific skills needed for reference services. Here we have another example for a library and information science career in instruction and outreach. Required skills for these positions include database and search techniques, analytic skills, instruction experience, and integrated library systems. Additional skills required by employers for these positions include leadership, working well with diverse populations, and communication and interpersonal skills. Note here that, that we also have a relative um, pathway at School of Information for instruction and outreach that's called information intermediation and instruction. And finally, here's a very familiar job um, listings category that's applicable to all industries, business and management. Specific um, skills requested within business and management include marketing and sales, people management, and financial and budget management. Additional skills that may or may not specifically be addressed through the curriculum but are being, um, but are being sought in these positions include public speaking, meeting and event planning, uh, instruction and teaching, and project management. Further note that um, our school has a pathway on leadership and management that guides students toward a career in leadership and management both within, within and outside the library environment. Well, we've highlighted just a few uh, examples here. There are many examples of job qualifications that you can view in the Emerging tra Job Trends Report that's available on our school website, as well as the various pathways our program offers that provide guidance to students on coursework relative to those, those um, career options. So Stephen Abram recently wrote that technical or technological skills have always been important elements for long-term career success, but growing your soft skills, such as management, interpersonal relations, listening, influencing skills, and empathy can make the difference between a competent professional and a great leader.
So how can information professionals expand their knowledge and skills to keep up with the demanding changes of the information and technology landscape? How can we become rock stars or superheroes in our profession, in our organizations, and in our communities? There are many paths to becoming a rock star. We outline just a few here, including um, the importance of a commitment to professional development and lifelong learning, professional networking at the local, national, and even international levels, volunteering in our communities and in our professional organizations, and doing presentations to share our knowledge and our experiences with others. So I encourage you to participate in as many professional development opportunities you can fit into your schedule. The field of information science offers so many opportunities to extend education beyond the MLIS, the Master in Library and Information Science, through workshops, through the annual Library 2.0 virtual conference, which you're doing right now. Uh, so you've checked that one off your list. Um, and even through um, MOOCs, MOOCs, the massive open online courses, where you can pick up courses to supplement your degree. So attending local, state, and national conferences are also a tremendous way of extending your learning and also of obtaining professional development training. I also want to stress the importance and the value in professional networking. Establishing and using your personal network in person and online is the most successful job hunting strategy. As the San Jose State University School of Information's Career Development Center puts it, a networking contact is anyone you can, who can provide you with relevant career information, has the power to hire you, or can introduce or refer you to another contact. There are several ways to develop your professional network as part of your job search strategy. And these are listed here. Um, you can join professional associations, join a committee, attend conferences, use social networks like LinkedIn and Facebook, Twitter, attend local network uh, workshops, library openings and celebrations, visit libraries you'd like to work in, meet the staff, get involved, and also tell your family and friends so they can um, let you know if there's jobs um, that are may be interested in. And it's good to network beyond the job seeking as well in the sense of um, building your professional network and, and there are many opportunities that come out of that as well. Uh, so another great strategy for success is to become a volunteer. Um, to volunteer in your community, seek new opportunities to develop new skills and to meet new people, especially those um, your, uh, your organization serves. It's also good to volunteer at conferences, engage uh, with other professionals uh, from across the world, and meet the industry's thought leaders, and also to build your personal learning network. Um, finally, also to get involved in your local professional organizations, you know, signing up for committees or an ad advocacy event, becoming influential in your community through collaboration, shared knowledge, and direct involvement. Um, another strategy for success is for um, as presenting, and um, so I'll put the plug in now um, that you should consider to participate next year as a presenter in next year's Library 2.015 virtual conference. Um, um, these presentation skills that you develop both in person and virtually don't always come naturally um, to, um, to us, but they're still considered an essential skill for the library and information science professional, both within and outside the library environment. So think about next year for the conference, um, but you can also submit uh, presentations to local conferences, or you can offer online or in-person presentations in your community. And I also want to encourage all information professionals to expand their networks and tap into the global uh, information market. Participating in this library 2.014 conference is a great start in terms of engaging with professionals from around the world in a global conversation about information in library science and services today. Information today is crossing international borders and influencing communities worldwide. Um, there's a tremendous value in participating in the global community through developing a professional learning network, and through engaging in online forums and social media, and exploring ideas with others. 
Learning and sharing ideas with the global information market empowers information organizations to impact their local communities by learning about strategies, programming, and initiatives that were successful in other communities. It also provides a connected learning experience with professionals worldwide to comprehend and build strategies for handling change in the future. And I want to go back here just to say that there are a number of ways that you can begin that process by, and I've listed just a few organizations and associations that you could tap into to get started if you're not already in terms of um, being involved in IFLA or the Special Libraries Association or the International um, Librarians Network. Um, there's also organizations like Librarians Without Borders and many other great organizations to be involved in. So information organizations that develop um, that adopt a vision for themselves as the technological hub of their communities, meaning that they integrate technologies, they meet the user's point of need, they open opportunities for learning and exploration, those are the ones that will thrive. Information organizations have the opportunity to develop initiatives that make library tools available at the point of need enable users to interface with information in a natural and personalized manner and allow users to design their own learning outcomes. The challenge of the past decade with the influence of the internet, ebooks, and mobile technologies was to justify our presence in the community. That trend is changing. Patrons now are coming to the lib to libraries asking for access, exploring how to navigate the world of digital content, asking for technologies, and asking for instruction on how to use those technologies. The essence of the information professional is very much alive. To maintain the, that essence will require a consistent awareness of new technologies and how they will impact information services and user behaviors a constant willingness to learn and transform the way that we engage with information, technology, and the patrons, and also a commitment to high quality services via the library, which is now seamlessly physical as well as virtual. So what does it mean to be a rock star then? In a recent Forbes article titled, Anyone Can Pivot, What the Changing Role of Librarians Means for You, Neil Taparia states, no matter what you do, look for opportunities to make a difference outside your immediate role. You might, find, you might even find that you've carved out a new position that your company now needs. In my experience, those who exemplify this trend, to, um, exemplify this, tend to be the rock stars. There is great potential for all of us to um, choose our unique pathways with the ever-changing environment of information and technology and to become rock stars in the organizations and communities that we serve. In closing, I'd like to charge you to be fearless and to know your worth. Be committed to your own ongoing professional development. Know that you've developed personal qualities, technical expertise, and habits of mind as a librarian that will serve you well in a wide variety of work environments. But keep in mind that you must always be learning and adding to your skill set. As Stephen Abram recently said, you are your own best asset and every investment in yourself goes for naught. So many opportunities exist for you, you just need to stretch yourself and make it happen. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Do you want me to um, manage like questions? Can... Yep. If you have a question, yeah, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your virtual hand. The participants window has some icons at the top. The third one over is a hand. If you click on that, you can raise your hand and we'll give you the microphone. I have to say you're doing a good job since I have hired an alumna from the iSchool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Peggy Thanks so much, Peggy. Excellent presentation. I don't think I missed any questions in the chat, but again, if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. We'll wait a couple of minutes or raise your virtual hand. 
yeah, it's hard to track um, what's going on in the chat while I'm presenting. So, so I see a question from Peggy. How are you using volunteers in school libraries? Um, that might be a question more for the group, I think. Maybe people can chime in and how they're using volunteers in school libraries. There's any, if there's anyone who would like to answer that question, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand as well and take the microphone. Sort of a follow-up question Peggy asks is, are the roles of volunteers changing too? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I, um, uh, I think that I mean, we see it, we've seen a trend in recent years, you know, for um, not recent, but for for many years now, in terms of the increasing use of volunteers um, in a variety of ways and in some key key um, kind of beyond the shelving of books um, in maybe more strategic ways. But um, I don't have any specific data on that. So I'd be interested in hearing from the group if they have some examples of ways that they're using volunteers in their libraries in kind of interesting ways. Great. Thank you, Susan. I see a question from Jennifer. For those of us who might be considering a transition in a career, do we need to look at refreshing some academic studies? Uh, that depends. Uh, that's, there's certainly a lot of opportunities for you to do some refreshing of your academic studies um, at different schools. At our school, we have um, like a post-master certificate program that people can take, or you even can take just a specific course, one individual course in our program through our open classes program. You don't have to take a whole program of study. You could just do a single class if there was one thing you wanted to brush up on. And then, um, so those things, obviously, um, there's charges for, but then there's so many free things, too, in addition to conferences like this. Um, there are some of the MOOCs um, available. Our school right now is offering a MOOC that's already started, but um, on um, emerging technologies taught by Dr. Um, Dr. Sue Allman. And so we have um, that MOOC running, and those are free. And other schools, um, library and information science or iSchools, um, have um, offer MOOCs as well. University of Toronto offered one on advocacy, and um, Syracuse offers a couple um, on the new librarian, and um, uh, Indiana offers one on data analytics. So it depends on what your area of interest in or where you feel like you have a gap. But it may be if you feel like there's th the field is advanced so much that it would be useful and helpful to you to um, refresh or to learn new areas of study, then I think academic studies can be useful. In a variety, and there's so many different ways to achieve that. Um, there's probably other questions that have come in since I started talking. Steve? Yeah, there was a question. Um, I think if we go back, uh, that was the one from Jennifer. The next one was from Deb. I had some comments about networking, which I think is critical not only in a job search, but in changing perceptions about what a library is and what a library does in one's community. Can you comment further on that? Um, looking for her. Um, I'm not sure what comment further. You, ha I had some comments about networking, um, but in uh, changing per perceptions about what a library is and what a library does. I'm not sure what. Can you s give me a little more specifics about what what the question is? Deb, feel free to put a follow up. I think she's just asking about the ways in which when we talk to others and doing a job search, we talk about what a library is and what it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, if that's what the question is, my feeling is that it depends on who you're talking to and who your audience is, but I think we need to be, um, I, I think that many people still have very traditional um, stereotypical uh, views about what libraries are and what they do and what it means to be a librarian, and we covered that in the presentation. And I think that um, there's still many people who think like that. And I think I think that we're so much more. And so I think reframing and talking about our skills in ways that might be more impactful and meaningful to other people. Sometimes I sometimes I know in our field we get 
caught up in our own language and our own way of talking about what we do. And, and we get very specific, um, you know, bibliographic databases or, you know, other kinds of things that are not necessarily meaningful to other people. So in speaking about our services and our, um, and, and uh, in talking about what we do in representing ourselves, whether that's in a job search or to the community, I think it's important to try to think about the language that is most meaningful to and translating what we do into more meaningful language for them. So I'm not sure if I addressed what you wanted, but hopefully. So, so. Right, yeah, so, okay, I see, Deb, I'm sorry, I'm catching up to you. Yeah, and also to get the media on your on the library side. Um, I think it's, it's, so I think it's kind of what I talked about. I think it's also, um, you know, thinking about advocacy and some of the tools and techniques for that, um, especially with the media and in building support in your community for the library and also in reframing their, their ideas and stereotypes. So um, I think that there are a good range of things to, to do to, um, to prepare for that. And um, really, as I said, it's about reframing what we do speaking in terms that will be impactful to them. So what is it that they value? What makes a difference to them? And then making sure you're highlighting those things in particular make, to make a difference in your community. Sandy, I think the next one was uh, from Patrick. Do you keep statistics on a proportion of your new graduates taking jobs in libraries versus outside the field? We do. We have, um, if you go to our site under About Us, we have all sorts of performance metrics um, for our different programs. And so, so um, I don't remember the percentages offhand, um, but they are available there um, to, uh, um, to, to take a look at. You can see um, where the kinds of places that our students are going. Uh, we are seeing a growing number of our students um, pursuing careers and opportunities that are outside the traditional realm of um, the library environment. And of course, even what a job is today in a library, as we talked about, is not necessarily what is a traditional job, because there's so many different, the, the roles within libraries have evolved so much. Do you want the next one? Yeah. The next, the next sure. one was from Sarah. She said, do you have any further suggestions for those interested in global librarianship and opportunities? Perhaps a class in comparative and international librarianship? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know what the other, other schools do. I'm, I assume they have similar kinds of things, but our school does have um, courses in global um, librarianship, international librarianship. We also have this really, I'm really excited about, we have this very unique partnership with um, Librarians Without Borders. And so our students um, have opportunities to do in-person um, uh, service uh, uh, trips and also virtual opportunities to uh, work collaboratively um, to provide internship and other kinds of virtual services in support of the Librarians Without Borders. Um, so uh, there are um, a variety. Oh, we also have a virtually abroad course that we offer. This is one that we started offering a couple years ago. And that course um, pairs up students with international organizations to provide um, project-based work um, and in the, in the course. So in doing so, learning about working across global boundaries and communication and um, understanding the needs of a different in, international organization um, as well. So there's a variety of opportunities and experiences. I think this, per, this conference, for example, is a great, um, is a great um, international um, experience um, kind of opportunity because it does attract so many people from so many different countries and so different cultures, so um, participating in kind of um, international and global um, opportunities like this, I think, are also wonderful as well. Yeah, I'm ready for the next one. Um, what should, this is from Wendy. What should be the one thing that is most important for a community college librarian to achieve? For a community college librarian? I think that, I don't know that I think about it broken up in that specific um, context. Um, 
I think it's really about, um, I mean, in its most abstract level, I mean, it's really about providing value. <laughs> Um, to your co community. I mean, it goes back to the earlier questions that we were talking about in terms of communicating that value. But that's the most important thing, and I think that transcends any specific um, library environment. Um, and so really having deep understanding of your user community, um, I think, is extremely important. And um, then figuring out and making sure that you're delivering and providing that value to that constituency, I think, is the most important thing. Good question, though. Those are the questions that I've had there. And people okay. will probably love a quick break before the next set of sessions. If there's a final question or Cindy, if there's anything else you would like to say, we'll probably have a minute or two. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody to um, for um, attending this um, this uh, opening keynote session, and I look forward to a rich and um, interactive set of sessions and uh, presentations over the next two days. Really excited about um, the rest of the presentations, and um, hope you enjoy it. Um, really fun opportunity for us to come together um, on an annual basis. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, we've had several hundred sign-ups in the last week, which is just so much fun to see the activity. We know that the um, New Media Consortium, um, which has a keynote coming up in the hour following the next hour, uh, they had over a million downloads the first week of their library report. Very fun to be a part of the this active converse and important conversation. Thanks to Dr. Hirsch. Thanks to all of you. I will give you a quick break now. Do check on the web page for the schedule, library20.com. Go to the schedule page, and we have four great sessions coming up. Looks like, yeah, four great sessions coming up. Take care. Bye. Great. Thank you. Bye.